This Thursday night, many people all over the world will celebrate Halloween. As that strange hour approaches, what comes to mind? What comes to mind? Vox Toccata, a piece of music that brings about in us a powerful response. The spooky opening half trill and the ensuing demonic descent send a chill down the spine. And soon after, our imaginations go wild to the point where it seems that demons and skeletons have been let loose to roam around in the chapel, haunting the darkening chapel. Yet, despite our powerful response to the music, it's ironic to note that this piece of music was not written to become the soundtrack of Halloween. It was not created for the horror classics like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Tales from the Crypt, The Phantom of the Opera. Over the years since this toccata was written, all these extra eerie and supernatural themes have attached themselves to the piece. Though we do not know the exact occasion for the Takata, certainly Bach never intended to have it be that uh, gothic piece. He never would have dreamed that the venerable church organ would be the herald announcing and anticipating the arrival of evil spirits and their doings. Yet it seems this piece will forever be just that, and the picture that will come to our minds when it pumps through the organ will be that of a deranged scientist in his laboratory. 
Scary. <laughs> this Takata is not the only part of Halloween that has an ironic story. While the word, word Halloween conjures up images of black cats, goblins, witches, ghosts, and other supernatural characters, an innocent yet threatening ritual of trick or treat, ironically, Halloween has a very different origin. The ancient origins of what would eventually become Halloween go back to the ancient Celtic festival of Samhain. This was the day when the harvest would end and the dark, cold winter would begin, a day when the boundary between the worlds of the living and the dead became blurred, a day when it was believed that ghosts of the dead returned to the earth. However, the origins of the word Halloween come to us in the church in the seventh century when the Catholic Church under Pope Gregory, my favorite pope, by the way, designated November 1st as All Saints Day or All Hallows Day, thus making October 31st All Hallows Eve. On All Hallows Eve Day or All Saints Day, the church remembers those who have died and celebrates the communion of saints, the great cloud of witnesses that surround the church the richness of Christian history and the experience of God's grace. So it is that Halloween has a strange history, an ancient church festival placed on top of an even more ancient Celtic festival. So, is it a day when the living and the dead become blurred? Yes, I suppose so, but not so much in a supernatural way as in a faithful. One of my favorite All Hallows activities is Dia de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead. The chapel we have on campus led by the members of NASA. In chapel this Friday, you'll be invited to participate in this wonderful tradition. A tradition that makes light of death's sting in the certain hope of the resurrection. As a part of the service, we will remember those who have gone on before us. Those who now rest in the never-failing arms of God's love. You're invited to bring a remembrance of those saints, a picture, a poem, a letter, an object, anything that connects you to them, and place it on the altar. And together we will celebrate with the great cloud of witnesses, the communion of saints in every time and every place. Halloween. It's not a haunted house, an eerie soundtrack, trick-or-treat. It's all Halloween.